Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. My name is Charles Musprada Webb and today is part three in our WordPress and Elementor performance series. In today's tutorial, we're going to briefly rehash some of the basics of image optimization and how to serve scaled images using Elementor. And we're going to continue covering how to solve common GT metrics and page speed recommendations. Um, today in particular, we're going to cover entity tags, enabling keep alive, and how to leverage browser caching. And at the end of this tutorial, I'm also going to share just a couple of tricks that I use on a daily basis that I find useful with both Elementor and WordPress in general. Now, as many of you will remember, in my first video, we covered some basic WordPress and Elementor performance fundamentals. We looked at how to read a waterfall chart and how to perform a GT metric scan. We looked at how to use short pixel to optimize images across your WordPress site. We also looked at how to serve scaled images using Elementor's page editor and how to fix those deferred JavaScript recommendations for the video embed widget. And a big part of that video as well as we covered the asset cleanup plugin and how to use that to dequeue unneeded plugin scripts and style sheets that you just don't need on certain pages, which helps reduce the number of server requests, which also helps drastically speed up your We also did a live optimization demo of an Elementor test site that I had set up um, in part two, or my last video, we covered gzip compression and what that is, as well as how to activate that without using any plugins. Um, and as mentioned in this particular video, we're going to continue covering some more performance topics, including lazy load, entity tags, um, fixing those keep alive connection recommendations, and leveraging browser caching. In my first video, I show how to quickly and easily optimize all of your images in WordPress using the short pixel plugin. And I also show how to properly size those images and serve them scaled using the Elementor page editor. And just in case you missed that, uh, no big deal, we're going to quickly show you how to do that. What you'll want to do is go to your WordPress dashboard, um, go to plugins and add new. You'll search for the short pixel plugin and install and activate that. Now once you install and activate ShortPixel, they're going to ask for you to log into your account. If you don't already have an account with ShortPixel, it takes like five seconds to sign up for one. You can simply click the link below that I provided in this tutorial and uh, even sign up for their free account and uh, you'll get 100 images each month to optimize for free. All right, now that ShortPixel is installed and activated, um, what we're going to go ahead and do is pull up our demo page that we set up to optimize here for you guys. So this is an Elementor page with a couple of different sections uh, with images and towards the bottom we set up a YouTube video embed. In particular, with these images, they're currently set to a full image size. And when you click on this particular image, you'll notice that it's completely uncompressed. This image is 5 megabytes, and the dimensions are 5328 by 3912. So it's super large and massive right now. Um, and so is the other image that we have uh, right here, this image. So the trick that I like to use is if you click on this image, I'm going to click Edit Image. I'm going to scale this down real quick to maybe let's say 1280 by 723. I don't really need a big version of this image because it's just going to be in that section. So I'm going to do that and click update. And you'll notice now instantly that image went from being 2 megabytes to 124 kilobytes. So already a, a big um, optimization uh, just by scaling it down. And then using short pixel, even though you can do the automated processing, if you add a new image, you can also manually optimize it or uh, manually optimize it here. Very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click refresh. And you'll notice that after short pixel went in and optimized, it is now 47 kilobytes instead of 2 megabytes. So this is a properly optimized image. Now before I optimize all of the images in our media library, I went ahead and did a GT metric scan on this particular page. And you'll notice that we have a slow load time of 5 seconds with a total page size of 7.5 megabytes. And when I take a look at the page speed recommendations, I see that I need to serve scaled images, uh, which is expected. Um, I also have to optimize my images, and um, I also had to defer uh, parsing of JavaScript. And when I expand this, I notice that it's due to the YouTube embed player at the bottom of this particular Elementor page. So knowing that, now that I've optimized the images using short pixel, I'm going to go through and make sure that they're served scaled. I'm going to go ahead and edit image. And then here, instead of image size equals full, I'm going to select an appropriate dimension for this image. 
Um, another option you can do is whenever you resize or scale the image, you can properly size it then, in which case you can use image size equals full. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and use medium large as a predefined dimension. And I'm going to use that for all my images here because that's about the size that I want for all of them. So I'm going to change all of them from full to medium large. And at the bottom, remember, we have this YouTube video embed. Um, by default right now, what's happening is every time a visitor comes to this page, it's not only trying to load all of these uh, sections and images, but it's also trying to load all of the JavaScript related to this YouTube player, which is really not needed because when a visitor first comes to this page, as you notice, you can't even see the YouTube player. It's all the way at the bottom. So there's no reason for me to be loading the JavaScript right now. So to fix that, what I'm going to go ahead and do is come down to the video embed widget. I'm going to right click on edit video. And you'll notice in Elementor at the very bottom you have an option on your video widget that says Image Overlay. I'm going to activate that. And you'll remember from the video one, I had my own uh, screenshot that says if you like Divi, click here. If you did that, it popped open the video. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a different application of this. So it doesn't really matter what video you have here. You can simply take a screenshot of your video. And after taking your screenshot and naming it something like, I don't know, for me, I just named it Video Screen. I'm going to quickly upload it onto here. And I'm going to set basically the cover image or image overlay as the thumbnail of that video player. And then I'm going to say Lazy Load because it doesn't really need to be loaded until the visitor scrolls down to this particular portion. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and click Update. Now if you want the video player to pop out, you can click Lightbox. Uh, if you wanted to um, incorporate another play icon, you could, just in, you know, in the event that your thumbnail didn't have a play icon, you could do that here. Uh, and for image size, I've already set that to medium large, so it's going to be scaled. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is come back to GT Metrics. I'm going to go ahead and retest this page. Boom, and as you can see, uh, this page is now testing much better. The page speed is now loading much quicker at 1.5 seconds. Total page size is down to 838 kilobytes, uh, with total request being at 30. Now I'll also point out, on this particular demo page, you'll notice that it's a longer home page. So there's a lot of sections and it scrolls down. Um, ideally for me, whenever I design websites, I try to minimize how long the, the websites are because statistically the longer someone has to scroll down the more they tend to bounce off this particular page um, but in the event that you absolutely you know want or need that long page what I recommend is a feature called lazy load um, and this is a great time to talk about lazy load so what does lazy load do well lazy load is actually a really cool performance feature that helps speed up your load times uh, and it reduces your initial load sizes by only loading what is in the visitor's browser's viewport. Um, so it works wonders on longer pages, uh, especially like the one that I've created. So to give you an example, you know, in my browser, this particular viewable area, this is the browser viewport. So everything below the fold currently is also being loaded every time I come to the page. What lazy load is going to do is actually not load a lot of the images below the fold um, until the user starts scrolling down. Now with good lazy load plugins, uh, you should barely um, even be able to notice the transition if at all. So one of my favorite plugins for lazy load is actually a free plugin called WP Rocket Lazy Load. And this is only for those of you that um, have clients that absolutely have uh, a design that requires a long scrolling uh, the page. Um, so you'll notice right here, Lazy Load by WP Rocket. I'm going to install that. And this has worked great. I've used this particular plugin across tons of different WordPress sites. Uh, and it works very well with a lot of different uh, performance and caching plugins out there. But if you click on Settings, you'll want to select Images, iframes, and Videos, and replace YouTube videos by thumbnail and click save and uh, save changes. And for me, I'm going to go ahead and also clear my cache through WP Engine. Now let's go ahead and retest our page. 
what this is going to do is only load the items that are in the visitor's viewport, thus speeding up even more our website's load time. And you'll notice with WP Rocket activated, uh, the website did get um, a little bit faster, but also our total page size drastically went down as it's now only reading 389 kilobytes for the total page size. And with GT Metrics, uh, what I like to do is run the test at least twi two or three times just to get an average uh, of how it's performing, especially since I'm using a, a server level cache. So here it goes again, analyzing. And you'll notice now that this particular page is loading 0.6 seconds with 389 kilobytes. 29 requests to the server because of that lazy load feature, which is fantastic. When I look at the waterfall, you'll notice the waterfall is drastically reduced in size and scope as well. Now what's really cool about this is if you go back to our actual Elementor page, you'll notice that this page has not changed functionally. Even with lazy load activated, it looks and feels the same. It loads super fast. It just now loads a lot faster and it's not loading a lot of the stuff that it doesn't need to upon its first load. All right, now that we've got you caught up on how to optimize images, how to serve them scaled using the Elementor page editor, and how to lazy load content on longer Elementor pages, uh, we're gonna go ahead and dive into three more GT metrics and page speed uh, recommendations that I often see people having problems with. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cover entity tags or e-tags, keep alive connections and leverage browser caching. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the GT metric scan for a uh, performance optimization project that I'm working on right now. So looking at this GT metric scan, I noticed that um, they immediately have some recommendations that we can easily solve. So following the previous steps in this tutorial, you guys now know how to solve um, this recommendation, serve scaled images. So you know how to do that using Elementor. You know how to optimize the images. And following the steps in my last video, you guys know what gzip compression is and how to activate that without using a plugin. In this tutorial, we're going to cover um, how to fix leverage browser caching. We're also going to take a look at, uh, in the YSLOW area, we're going to take a look at how to configure entity tags properly. And we're also gonna, going to take a look at keep alive connections. And just in case you guys still see this enable gzip compression and you need to fix that, if you look at video number two uh, of this series where we cover gzip compression, I include a free file that you can download and just copy and paste those settings into your HT access and that's going to fix all your gzip compression files. If you guys have previously downloaded the ninja stack, um, or if you guys download the ninja stack now, then that actually already includes all the fixes that we talk about both now and in future tutorials. Uh, all you have to do is just copy that set of settings into your HT access and it solves, I think, five or six different things. So what are entity tags? Well, basically, um, this is a pretty complex topic and all you really need to know is that uh, it's an identifier for any specific version of any resource on your server. And, um, you know, so basically as you make changes to different pieces of content, e-tags are a way for your server to quickly identify and reference any one of those specific variations. And so it allows your cachers and servers to be more efficient uh, because whenever a visitor comes to your site and requests, let's say, your homepage, um, your server doesn't need to send a full response unless your content's actually changed. So this helps speed up things um, quite a bit. Um, keep alive connections. Pretty much most servers already have this uh, activated and enabled by default. But essentially what happens is, like, let's say a visitor comes to your homepage. When he first comes to your website, there's an initial connection that's made between his browser and your web server. Um, if Keep Alive is not enabled, then anytime he clicks on the next page or clicks on a piece of content, it has to reestablish another connection with your server. So this slows things down a bit. If you have Keep Alive enabled, then what happens is that connection stays active and so that that visitor can send multiple HTTP requests without having to establish a new connection. And of course with leverage browser caching, when that visitor does come to your website, a certain portions of their website, such as your logo and certain style sheets, can be stored at the browser level uh, and so that it reduces the amount of server requests it takes to load that particular page. Now when I go back to the performance optimization project that I'm working on, and I look at the page speed recommendations, I notice that, for example, under gzip compression, a lot of these are pointed back to 
uh, the actual client domain. So this is the this would be like where your domain name is. There's a couple of third-party requests that we won't be able to do anything about. Like here's one from Amazon, because um, third-party uh, requests are controlled by their server, and so there's nothing that we can really control about that. Um, but geez, of compression, I can at least fix all the errors that are on our site. Uh, when we look at leverage browser caching, same thing here. I see a lot of um, expirations not set or specified for uh, different resources on the current site. And even if you're currently using a performance or caching plugin, you'll notice that a lot of you actually, especially if you're using SVGs, SVGs will still pop up in the recommendations area. And the reason for that is a lot of um, your servers and WordPress sites aren't properly defining these SVGs. And so in my Ninja stack, as well as the free files I provide, um, at the very top, one of the first things that I put into my code uh, is defining MIME types. And uh, in here, I've added in the, uh, the Wolf font formats and Wolf 2 font formats, as well as SVG. So now this will be properly recognized by GT Metrics and PageSpeed uh, uh, scans. Now when I look further on to his why slow, uh, why slow recommendations, I notice you know, we'll still need to compress certain elements with gzip and configure entity tags, which we just got done talking about. So before I even really do anything, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and take my ninja stack file. And if you guys have seen uh, the gzip compression video and are watching this video, in each of these videos I include a free uh, file. And in those files, I include the fixes for the particular topics that we talk about in each video. This is my Ninja Stack. This has everything built into one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And what I'm going to do is go straight to the HT Access file. And I'm just going to go ahead. And so there you have this begin WordPress area. I'm not going to mess with anything that currently exists in the HT Access. I'm just going to take my Ninja Stack and paste it on top and push everything else down. I'm going to save. Now, if you're using a caching plugin, once this saves, this is where you're going to want to go ahead and um, clear any cache that exists. And as I showed in my previous video, you guys will normally also want to do a backup of your site or at least your HTX file before making any changes to it, just as a security precaution. But now, when I go back to GT Metrics and I run another scan, um, you guys will see that a lot of those errors that we just saw are now just instantly going to be fixed. Alright, so now when I go back to uh, the GT Metrics, I'm going to take a look at GZip, GZip Compression. You'll notice that a lot of those recommendations that are coming from his domain name are now fixed. When I go to leverage browser caching, this is now at a B, and you notice that a lot of those leverage browser caching issues are now fixed. The only things that actually even remain are third-party requests, and these we can't even do anything about. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at why slow next, and you'll notice that um, configured entity tags is now set to 100%, so that's instantly fixed. Compressed components with gzip, um, everything has been fixed except for that one third-party request, which is awesome. So that's a great starting point. Add expires headers. Uh, all that was also fixed up except for third party requests. So instantly a massive amount of fixes being applied before we really get into the nitty gritty. Um, and the remaining large issues like serve scaled images and optimized images, uh, you guys already know how to fix uh, using the previous part of this tutorial. All right, now that we cover all of that, let's get into a couple of ninja tricks that I've picked up over my past couple of projects that I think you guys might find helpful. The first one is going to be how to display messages to website visitors using Internet Explorer 9 or older. Um, and conditional statements are a feature that you can use in any HTML uh, widget. Or um, if you're using a text editor like here in Elementor, you can just click text and insert the code in here. Um, but basically what this code will do is recognize... Um, whether or not someone is using Internet Explorer and if they are it's going to display this message to them and um, currently in my demo I just have uh, a really friendly message saying hey you're using an outdated unsecured browser for the best experience please update it um, and you can customize this message and implement any links as you see fit um, but the point being is you can copy and paste this into any elementary widget 
And if that particular visitor is using Internet Explorer 9 or older, then they'll, be, they'll see that message. Um, all other modern browsers are going to ignore this field altogether. And so I found this particular snippet of code to be super helpful whenever you implement, let's say, a um, top bar or a pre-nav section, so above your primary navigation um, as like a, a message area. All right, and for the next new trick, it's really more a series of browser tools that I use on a daily basis. If you guys already have Google Chrome installed, go ahead and pull that up. You can follow along with me. If you go to your Chrome preferences, um, you, there's a button called extensions that you can click. And um, to find the particular extensions that I'm about to show you, you can click on your um, settings and then click on Open Chrome Web Store. From here, you can search these particular extensions. Um, the first one being Facebook Pixel Helper. What this extension does, it adds a button right here uh, to your Chrome browser so that when you go to a website that has Facebook Pixel installed, it will actually let you know. And what's cool about this is I use it all the time to troubleshoot or just verify whether or not um, the Pixel script was successfully installed on the client website. What that looks like is when you go to a website, you'll notice here on Astro's website, I can see now that this button is lit up. When I click it, it says that there was one pixel found on Astro's website. All right, the next useful extension that I use is called IE Tab. And what that does is it enables me to display web pages using Internet Explorer within my Chrome browser. And this is super helpful in particular because I'm a Mac user and I don't actually have Internet Explorer installed. And I know even for a lot of you Windows users, a lot of you were smart and deleted Internet Explorer a long time ago as well. Um, but there are times where you have either website visitors or clients that use Internet Explorer and complain that they um, can't view a particular section or a particular section of the website um, doesn't look right. And so for de debugging purposes, uh, obviously you'd want to find an easy and quick way of, of taking a look. So when I, uh, for example, go to um, Astra's website, um, after I've installed that extension, I now have this button with an E right here, and I can click that and it'll load this website using, right now, Internet Explorer 11. And what's cool about this plugin is you can also select a different version. So I see that, for example, on Internet Explorer 9, this is normally where a lot of WordPress sites uh, break down because Internet Explorer 9 is so old that a lot of the modern frameworks and coding frameworks that we use now uh, weren't around yet. So um, it's unable to actually display a lot of this. All right, the next, next extension that I use all the time is called Fireshot. Um, and what this extension enables you to do is basically capture a full web page screenshot from top to bottom with one click. And so uh, once you install it, for example, I'm going to go to Asher's website, and it, it, there's a button right here that's an S. If you click that, there's an option that says Capture Entire Page. And as you can see, it's already scrolling down the page automatically and capturing the entire site. And it compiles one image for you. And there's a lot of cool export options. Like you can save it as one image, you can save it as a PDF, you can email it to someone or copy it to a clipboard. All right, the next useful extension uh, that I use all the time is one called Virtual Hosts. And what I use this for is, let's say you're migrating your Elementor site to a brand new hosting company, um, and before you point your domain name over to it, because you don't want to have any downtime, you just want to make sure that the migration was successful and your website works just fine. What you can do is, um, once you install this extension, you'll have this button right here, and you can put your domain name right here. Put, you, you can then put in your brand new IP address or your A record to your new hosting company here, and what this will do is tempor temporarily enable you to preview your site using your domain name um, and what it would look like or function once you repoint it to your new IP address. And this happens virtually, so you never actually have to repoint your domain name, but can quickly preview that uh, straight from your browser. Super helpful. All right, the next one that I love using, and the final one that will wrap up the tutorial, is a plugin called WordPress Theme Detector and Plugin Detector. Um, this is a super cool one that allows you to go to any uh, website and if it is a WordPress site, this button will light up blue and you can click it and it will instantly try to identify what theme and what plugins that particular website is using. And um, in particular, this is great for when you come across a WordPress site 
and you see a particular section or a feature that you really like and you just are curious on how they did it. A lot of times whenever you take a look at what plugins they're using, this will great, give you great insight into how they accomplish that particular feature. All right, everyone, that's it for me tonight. Thanks for watching. Um, if this video was helpful, please comment below. If you have any other Elementary Ninja tricks, please share it with the group. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks a bunch. And have